Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and this is a special request RPG Maker MV tutorial for HemiWorks. And HemiWorks asked me through Twitter if I would like to showcase her new plugin, the HemiWorks uh, Party Manager. And I thought, wow, this is such a cool plugin. It reminds me of uh, Final Fantasy VI, uh, especially when you get into the world of Ruin. You can switch back and forth between your party members, because uh, you get like 12 or even more than that probably. And you build like three party members and you have to go through like a series of dungeons where you, one party would go and hit a switch and then you'd have to switch to your other party. Or even at the very beginning of the game when you get Locke and the Moogles come and uh, you have to protect Terra or Tina depending on which version you played. Uh, and you got to press a button and switch between your parties. Well with this plugin you can do that. So I've put a little scene together. So we're going to hit the switch and we're going to let Lydia out of her cell and uh, we've informed the player we can press the P button to switch parties so let's press P now we can switch parties and now we're Lydia and we can press P switch back to Tiana and back and forth let's hit this switch up oh, well we can't get there so we have to switch party members so let's go over here but what we're trying to do is get this shiny stuff down here but we can't get this gate open so let's see if we can do this there we go. But we don't want to be greedy and take all the loot to ourselves, so we'll bring Lydia back down here. Merge the parties and share the sweet loots. Let's merge the parties. I didn't fade in the screen. I'm a genius. But uh, let me show you. Uh, let me show you how to do all of this. It's really cool. Let me just do a fade in the screen real quick. I just want to showcase that it works. That was my fault, I didn't put a fade in. We'll do the same thing really quickly. Hit this switch, press P, go over here, hit this switch, press P, hit that switch, press P. Yeah, let's merge the parties. We get an animation, fade out the screen, fade the screen back in. And you don't have to do those fades, I just thought it looked cooler. And then now we have both parties together. Really, really neat. Um, it's pretty simple, easy to use. You're going to need some plugins, so I'll put a link in the description below to where you can get the plugins you need. I also combine this with uh, one of my favorite plugins, the Yanfly's Button Common Events plugin, so that you can. Uh, press one button and just switch between your parties it makes it so much easier to do so to start off I'm gonna show you the plugin commands real quick so let's go over to the HemiWorks plugin and this is called the Heme party manager and the default ID will be one and then the active party variable can be a high number that a, a variable that you're not using if you're using 999 change that to something else like a thousand nine 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 or something let's go to the help file real quick uh, basically, you can scroll down until you get to about right here. Everything you need is right here, and it's it's really conveniently uh, it's simply it's it's explained really well. So what you need to do right here and how to use it. But I'm going to go over everything, and then they, uh, HemiWorks goes into detail on each part of it. So you can read all of this if you want to get a more uh, in-depth understanding. But if you just want to get like a a quick uh, rundown on how it works, I'm going to show you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a common event uh, so that we can bind it to our button common events plugin. So we're going to make our party switcher. But before we want to let the player switch party members, most likely they're not going to start with all the parties. So we're going to put a, a switch on it that will start disabled. So if the player presses the button from the beginning, it doesn't do anything until you activate the switch in an event. So we're going to start by creating a new conditional branch, and in this conditional branch, we're going to create a new switch called Enable Party Switch, or Enable Party Switching. And then what we're going to do is set that to on with an else branch and hit OK. Underneath that, we're going to do another conditional branch called the Change Parties Switch. So we'll right-click, Insert New Conditional Branch, create another switch called Change Parties. And then you're going to set that to on with an else branch. Hit OK. 
Underneath that, we're going to do a very simple script call. So right click, insert new on tab three at the bottom, you have a script here. So inside this script box, you're going to put in the command capital P on party dot switch one. That's going to put you back to your first party. Underneath that, what we're going to do is control switches and turn off that party switch. The one that's required for it to switch to, par to party one. So we'll go to control switches, select the uh, change party switch, hit OK, and set that to off, and hit OK. On the else handler for the first one in here, we're going to uh, right click, insert new, and we're going to do a, a, a script call, page three at the bottom, capital P on party dot switch, except this time we're going to use two. Because we're going to, we can actually change that number to whatever we want, but it would have to match up with another uh, script call we do later on. For this tutorial, we're going to use two. And then underneath that, we're going to control the switches for the change party switch, and we're going to turn it back on. So if the player activates this common event again, they'll be able to switch between party one, and then the switch will be on, and then it'll turn off after they become party one. And then they press it again, it's it's off, so they'll go party two, party one, party two, party one. And it's just an endless loop, so the player can just switch freely. Very, very simple, easy way to do it with a few switches. Okay, we've got our party switch. Let's take a note of the number we're using. We can see that we're using number 32 here for our party switch. So we're gonna go to our plugin manager. You're gonna need Yan Fly's button common events. If I can find it. Here it is, uh, Yan Fly's button common events. And you can place this uh, number 32 common event on any key you want. I've selected to put it on the key P for party, but it's up to you. Just select any key you want, double click it, put in the number of your common event, hit OK and you're done. Now let's look at the events. So we're starting the party off with Lydia right here. And the first thing that we're, that's going to happen, basically the first event that's going to take place is this switch. Because nothing, nothing's going to, you, you don't, the player doesn't have access to anything. These, these events are controlled by this switch. So we'll look at this first event for this switch. And to do a basic switch like this, I have other tutorials on it, but I'll go over it really quickly. We're playing a sound effect, and then we're doing a movement route. And on this movement, movement route, we're selecting this event, which is the switch itself. And s since it's starting in the upright position, that means it's facing down. So what we're going to do is we're going to go turn left, turn right, turn up. And then we're going to go down here and do a switch, and we're going to turn on switch number 67. Well, let's see. It'll be different for you. We're basically, uh, this is going to be a, a switch that you create for a door or something. So I've called this one a jail door switch. So we're turning on the jail door switch. You actually don't have to do that for this plugin. This is just to get through a door. I'm sure you probably understand how to do the switch already. And you can also do this switch event right underneath the move event. So you don't have to control the switch with the move event. That's irrelevant. However, this, this script, uh, script call is what you're gonna be doing. Insert new tab three at the bottom, script uh, under advance. And this is where we're actually using Hemiworks' plugin to create a new party. So we're going to do capital P on party dot create. And this is going to be the number, whatever number you want to call it. You can call it 777 or whatever you want to call it. But we're just going to be simple and keep our numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is our party number 2. So we're creating a new party, calling it number 2. And we're going to end line. Underneath that, we're going to do capital P on party dot add capital A on actor. So the first number here is going to select what party you want to add an actor to. So since we just created party two, we want to add an actor to party two. So we're going to put a comma, and then we're going to say what actor do you want to add to party two. So the reason why I'm using number three, because if we go to the database here, and we look at our actors, we see that uh, Lydia is number three. So that's this is the number you would put in that second uh, argument. So you can add whatever actor you want just by changing a number. So we did a two, comma, three with the closing parentheses and an end line. Underneath that, we need to specify where the party starts at because now we've got a party and there's an actor in that party, but it's not on the map anywhere. So we're going to do a capital P on party, dot set, capital L on location, and then we're going to select the party that we're going to uh, put down. So we're going to assign, we're going to actually draw the event on the map two. that's par <coughs> party two. And now we're going to select the X and the Y coordinates. So how you figure this out is really simple. You basically select an, uh, a location on the map where you think you might want them to go, 
you look all the way to the bottom right, you see there's two numbers right here. 2510 for this location. If we go over here, this location is 9 comma 9. And she's actually going on 25 comma 9 because that's right here. So she's being drawn right there. Party number 2 at 25 9. Now this third number is the map number. So if you're not sure what map number it is, you can just emit this last value. I want to double check if this works. Because um, otherwise you have to go into the JSON files and look if you don't know what map they're on. So if we emit the last one, the map number, I know that this is map 71 right here. So let's go through it again and see if it still works real quick by emitting the last number. Because otherwise I'll show you how to find the map number in the JSON file. We go like that. Oh, it works. So there it is. Lydia is there. Okay, so if you don't know what map number it is, but you know that you want them to appear on the same map, you can just get rid of that third argument in that event, or in that, that script call. So you can go like that. But I know that this is map 71 for me because I just created it, so I'm going to put 71 in there. So you would just go party number, the X location and the Y location, and then you can close the parentheses and do an inline. And that created that. Now underneath that, when you first assign your first party, um, and you want to enable the the party switching with the with the button that you have to turn on that switch because we've set it to be disabled from the beginning in our common event by having uh, by knowing that all switches are set to off there's they're booleans and they're set to false by default so in order for that button to even work at all we have to activate this switch by turning it on so now we're controlling the switch enable party switching on and now when they press P, they'll be able to switch parties back and forth, but the player doesn't know that. So we're showing a text to say, hey, press the P button and you can switch parties. And that's it for the first event. What we're doing on the second page here is having the, the image of the, the lever pulled down. And the conditions for this is basically the jail door switch is on. So when we turn the switch on right here in the move event, it, does, it uh, opens up these other events. So we'll look right here. This is an event that just has an image. And then on this page, it's a blank image. And if the jail door switch is on, it's going to be a blank image. So if we were to turn the jail door switch off, it would go back to that. And we hit the switch, and it turns the switch on. So it makes that disappear. And this is basically a copy paste, but a different, the bottom half of that jail. So empty event doesn't need anything. All you have to do is make sure that this event is uh, set to empty. The image is, is not there and then use the switch and then when you turn on the switch with the lever it makes the, the door disappear. Now from the beginning uh, Lydia won't appear here at all. So I've made an event that just looks like Lydia. Um, the, the party won't be there until you pull that lever. So what I've done is created a, a blank image, a blank event that just shows a picture of Lydia there and when that same jail door switch gets turned on she disappears. So if you try to make an, uh, a party spawn on an event, they won't be able to move. So we have to make sure that this switch that's in the event, the jail door switch, is triggered, which is going to make the event of Lydia disappear, is triggered right before we create the party and place the party in a location, in the same location. So because they happen so fast, you don't really notice. But you, you may have noticed it blinked real quick before, the party, before Lydia started moving. So what was happening, happening was the, the doors were opening, and then as soon as this switch turned on, um, the event disappeared, and then the party was created on that same spot right after the event disappeared. And then uh, we enabled switching and all that. So the same thing right here, we're just doing a switch condition with no image on this one. So when we go to this one, it's the same thing except we don't have to do any party uh, script calls or anything because we've already done all that. Everything's already in place. This is all just basic uh, eventing now. The same thing, except this is controlling these doors, and this one right here is controlling these doors. Now there's one more thing I need to show you. So this last event where they get the gold, and they, you know, they manage to work their way in to find the gold, um, all we've done is prompted the player, would you like to merge the parties and share the sweet loots? You give the player a choice. Um, and then we show an animation if they say uh, yes, merge the parties. We fade out the screen, and here's where the you can. This is all flavor. You can change all that, but what you'll have to do is this right here. You do another script call that's on page three at the very bottom under script under advanced. So you go party capital P on party dot merge, 
and in parentheses you're going to select the parties you want to merge you want to mer merge party two comma with party one and then parentheses and line and that's it then we did a wait for 30 uh, wait for half a second control a self switch which will make this disappear <clears throat> excuse me and then finally fade in the screen which I forgot to do sorry about that and that's basically it so hopefully you guys like this tutorial I really enjoy this plugin I just started using it uh, thank you for making this plugin Hemi works thank you again Yanfly for the awesome button common events uh, plugin and uh, they work sweet together so um, thank you guys for watching if you did like this tutorial please like favorite share and subscribe I know I haven't said that in all my videos but I should so um, if you guys have a special request or a, c a comment, you can leave it below. I read them all, uh, and I spend a lot of time every day doing that just so that I can uh, – I want to be involved with you guys. So if you have any suggestions or special requests, place them below, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much for being awesome. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial, and we will see you in the next one. <laughs>